morning, everyone. Tammy Trier, TrierWilderness.com. I hope you guys are all doing well this morning. It is a really pretty day here in northern Idaho. We are finally getting some cold temperatures. I know many of you have had some really frigid temps. We have been in balmy 30s and 40s and um, had a lot of rain last week, but this week we are getting snow and it's just really pretty here. Good morning, Tammy. How are you today? I bet you are in negative temps today too because it's getting colder here. So I imagine you are probably getting colder as well. <laughs> I'm just going to stretch this out a little bit. I decided to camp out on the couch today in a comfy spot. It's I'm right here by the fire. It's cozy. And I've got really good things to share with you guys today. Um, I thought our topic today, we would touch on, you know, the goals that you have and also if you feel you have a purpose and I think that's really important um, in the whole aspect of functioning in our lives and and running running a successful life almost up to zero right now Ooh, you're getting warm now good morning Sylvia glad to have you guys joining me I wanna know what your successes are so far and maybe even what your struggles are but how are you doing in this process because as we start the new year it's as I said a new year we look for a new year for a new beginning but a new year is really no different than the year before you're gonna have your ups and your downs and you go into it really excited and then life just continues to happen as it always does and you've got chaos all over the place good morning Cammy dear glad to have you joining me um, you know, we, we started out at a, a nice pace, but the last couple of weeks have just been insane and, and it's okay because we kind of made them that way. Um, my body can only handle so much. I can't push my body like I used to be able to. And I knew that what we were doing, I was, it was going to require me to really, really heavily push myself. And I also knew that the quicker I could get the task finished, the better it would be for me. So the task was getting our mountain man junior moved into his new place. And I'm so excited. It was so awesome. He got moved in Saturday and um, it was about a week and a half, two weeks of lots of work because um, we were also helping um, the homeowner there uh, to get their things into their new space so um, it was kind of a dual effort and um, it was a lot of work but it was a lot of fun and it was also very gratifying uh, one to help the homeowner and our dear friends to get settled in and to have a little bit of peace themselves and then to give the mountain man junior his own space and an amazing opportunity for him to caretake, um, do a little loving on people, as well as being able to um, really get a full taste of what it's like living on your own. He lived in a camper on our property last summer, and it was really good for him. Hey, hey, my blind healer sees the plywood floor and thinks it's a blanket, and he starts scratching like crazy. So just diverted that chaos. But um, it's just really exciting when you can um, help others, um, help our children. We all know that. I know many of you out there have children, and it's just really awesome to be able to see them grow. Um, and, and the question was asked of me, did I cry when I left after getting him all settled in? And you know what? I didn't. And I'm a crier. You see me. I get emotional when I share things with you guys. And I totally didn't. was unaffected by it because I've just got so much excitement in me to see all the opportunities and to see the growth and to just see his excitement that in and of itself was just so gratifying for me so sorry about that phone ringing in the background but um, Tammy says she is still decluttering that is that is good struggling with finding the joy and putting aside some things that need to be put aside totally get that totally get that and Sylvia says it's 33 with freezing rain here 
Yeah, we had a lot of the freezing rain, too. Our driveway was nothing but ice. Uh, we were out walking. I did that Winter Wonderland um, video. Some of you may have seen it that I shared on Facebook and on YouTube. And I'm walking with my, my uh, snowshoe poles because otherwise a dog comes, they hit the ice, they slide, and it's like a bowling alley. So I didn't want to be a pin. So, yes, this weather is just crazy. Friends of mine in Pennsylvania said they had negative 7 last week. And yesterday it was 65. That's just insane. This is just unheard of weather. But I'm very grateful that we have snow on the trees. It's pretty bright. I don't think you can see, but I'll see if I can share. Let me see here. I gotta try to spin this. Yeah. My little Narnia back here in the woods. I just absolutely love it. It's so nice being able to have the snow and the untouched snow and just seeing all the tracks it's just really awesome really really awesome and there's mrs copperhead mrs copper loves looking out the window okay so yes tammy i totally appreciate what you're saying with your decluttering too because we're trying to um i'm going to spin this around quick i'm jumping a little bit today but you can see that my house is taking a little bit more shape back my my couch is not in my kitchen and the clutter is starting to uh, eliminate again but we're still moving things around and still working in here this wall over here is going to get worked on this weekend and uh, we just progressively keep working so you've got dirt you've got clutter you've got stuff being packed and moved out um, the mountain boy took a good bit of his stuff and I was able to graciously donate a lot to his cause to his new space so that got rid of things so it's all exciting but we've got a lot to get out of the house um, we are going to be listing it for sale so with the realtor we've had it listed but we need to get this sold so um, really pushing so there's always stuff to do there's always things and I showed you my office well my office I think that's why I'm working downstairs my office is just this big bomb I don't function well in big bombs because I need to I feel like I need to clean it up but I've got so much catching up to do so I'm working in a different part of my house so that's the beauty of working from home I can move around and find a new place um, and and struggling with finding the joy I get that I think we get so busy and and one of the things I have greatly found and I think it kind of all correlates with what I'm gonna talk about today so I'm glad you mentioned that Tammy one is is slowing our pace and good morning Angela and uh, you know taking time to breathe taking time for ourselves and having a purpose in our days you know there's a lot of people that just kind of muddle through their days they they sort of have a plan um, they sort of have a a day-to-day -day schedule of sorts but they don't really have it focused and narrowed down and I'm finding too that a lot of people that are uh, retired and maybe feeling like they don't need and not necessarily retired either um, just people that feel they don't have a need to have a goal they've done everything in their life they don't really you know they just kind of feel a little lost how many of you are feeling lost in your attempts to find peace and joy as well as um, focus and a purpose and and putting it all together good morning Chad good morning good morning so, I, I really feel that that's a place where many people are. And I, I honestly could not work for somebody at this point in my life. I don't, it would be very hard. If I had to do it, I probably could, but I'm also not able to work eight hours straight without my body um, not wanting to cooperate. So, I've got a really focus on doing things that work for me but I've been self-employed since 1997 and when you when you work for yourself um, you really have to have an inner determination to be um, organized 
and 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 have that purpose and have uh, a plan for your day or it's really hard to be successful because you're all over the place and your focus is all over the place one of the things that I have greatly that I have done that has greatly made a difference in my life over the last three years is working less I work less but I'm more focused in that work time I am trying to get it down to a four-hour workday I I have been known to work 12 to 14 hours straight in a day or more depending on what's going on I've had a couple client installs that I wanted to just get done and I work 36 hours straight that's just nuts good morning good morning miss Mona ah you're lost and you need help I'm working on it we'll, we'll work on that together we're, that's why we're all here and the thing is working those hours oftentimes I spend a lot of those hours spinning my wheels looking at emails way too often getting caught in the squirrel and the bunny trail on Facebook or Instagram or whatever I was doing and my time wasn't focused and what I'm what I'm finding is I've shared with you guys I do it my devotions in the morning and that is something that is non-negotiable it's a must because it focuses my day it focuses my life and it gives me that joy and that peace that I need more than anything else but what I'm finding is I am focusing my time on the things that matter most to me and by doing so I am more productive in the areas where I need to be focused and I need to get things done Angela says I used to do that but hit a wall about a year ago same here about the bunny trails yeah and you know I, I did that my whole life uh, and when when my illness really set in and I ended up flat on my back that's and actually the year before that happened I was really sick not knowing why and trying to muddle my way through but realizing I needed to care for myself so I started stepping back and I started taking better care of myself and it's been a progressive thing for the last four years and like I said this last two weeks I've really been pushing hard but now I'm geared to start slowing the pace back down and taking better care of myself because I was really kicking my health around and and causing my body some struggles but we're gonna have that in this particular time right now while we really crunch to sell our house so the thing is finding the time no making the time to do self-care and to take care of yourself is important that always should be top of the list for me the very top of my list is my my time with God my focus on God and then ironing it out from there but we need to have goals and we need to have a purpose so if you're at a point in your life where you don't really feel you need goals because you've accomplished all the things you've wanted to accomplish you're in a place where you don't really have to uh, maybe work um, but you need purpose you need to have a purpose in your life and for those of you that are maybe at that place this is where you start doing the fun stuff this is where you start making goals and plans of the things that will give you joy for the rest of us that aren't in that place we need to gear down and we need to really fine-tune and we need to really put our focus on what's most important God self-care eliminating the distractions Tammy's decluttering decluttering is huge when you declutter you gain so much from that and uh, I am continuously decluttering I was out in the shed yesterday getting the mountain boy some things and I had really cleaned that up last year but as I'm back in there again I'm like oh boy get me the trash bags and get me the donation boxes because I'm I just I am finding that the simplicity side of things and just narrowing our goals working less but more concentrated gives me time at night that after I make my dinner I am not wiping my table off and then ending up having to go to bed I am able to sit down with my man we have been enjoying ourselves and just having the extra time 
to do the things we enjoy, spending more time together, and that's even through our chaos. So when you learn to really focus yourself down and really focus on your goals and get your goals in line and get them to a place where you're comfortable and just start working at them and, and, and really fine-tuning things. And again, what works for me isn't necessarily what's going to work for you. You're going to need to find what works best for you. Um, but I, I am thoroughly enjoying the fact that I can work less and get more done. I mean, how powerful is that? You know, that we aren't wasting 12 hours a day spinning our wheels most of the time and not getting it all done, overwhelmed, stressed, not healthy. So when you are able to fine-tune things to a point like I am, you just you find the joys. The joy is there because you are not beating a dead horse anymore, for lack of better terms. I mean, we all just sit there and just keep grinding our wheels. So the more we can get focused on what matters most to us and what gives us the joy, the better off we're going to be. And that requires us to have goals and have a plan have direction. I want to read a couple things to you. In the description below you'll find a lot of this stuff today too. But JC Penney said this best. He said, give me a stock clerk with a goal and I'll give you someone who will make history. But on the other hand, give me someone without a goal and I'll, and you, I'll give you a stock clerk. By having our goals we enhance our abilities and we, we enhance our lives. It's finding what we enjoy doing. And, you know, I'm talking to, a, I feel like I'm talking to a mixed crowd today in that I know, I know that I have people struggling. I know that I have people trying to find direction. I know that I have people looking for purpose. And I know that there are people out there delving into their goals and finding successes. So we've got a mixed bag of nuts here. And we need to, you guys need to pull the bits and pieces out of here that are for you today. Because I realized when I was putting this together that there's so many different things going on in the community that we've got going on right now. And... We need to have a purpose in our lives. If that purpose is something as simple as getting up and getting out of bed and making our bed, so be it. There is great progress in just getting up out of bed and making your bed. I love going into a room that is together. And, and I was really, this is gonna kind of be funny and it's probably good he's not here. The men are working today. I was over at Austin's yesterday, and uh, or the day before, and uh, you know I'd I'd tell him here, you know, get up, make your bed. It just gives you a fulfilling feeling that you've already started the day and you've already accomplished something. And when you come into your room, it's all together. It looks neat, and it's your space. And I'd always have to tell him that, and I wasn't, you know, he's a guy, he's a kid, and. Um, I went into his room to put some stuff in his room the other day when I got there and his bed was made. And it just made me smile inside because you know what, we're, you know, we teach our children things and we're supposed to build them up so that when they're on their own they remember these things. So that was kind of uh, rewarding. But I'm seeing in him the things that I've been preaching and the things that I've been talking about. I'm seeing him getting it and I'm seeing him um, realizing the benefits of it and it's those simple things something as simple as just making your bed in the morning and already your feet are on the floor and you've already made progress you know many of us are progress based we need to see progress in order to feel like we're successful Sylvia says learn to work smarter not harder exactly exactly and you know what I've preached that my whole life I'm always finding ways to be more organized in things but I'll tell you, Sylvia, it was so awesome when I started. I've been, I've, I feel it's really important to follow people that are doing what we want to accomplish. And I'm following people that work 
four hour work weeks four hour work week I'm looking to just narrow mine down to four hours a day you know um, these people have found a way to just be so efficient and and that is what I'm seeking because efficiency and focus and direction and goals and plans all have the ability to fine-tune our lives to a degree that we can spend them with our families we can spend them um, Mona's a painter you know spend them painting um, many of you ladies have and and fellas out there have things that you like to do getting out in the woods and getting dirt time um, working on big equipment um, you know there's a lot of things we like to do for fun and the more we get our work out of the way the more time we can spend doing the things we enjoy which will bring us to our joy and our peace and it'll enable us to spend more quality time with our families and and our children to bring them up the way we want to bring them up you know the more I watch what's happening in the world around me the the more and more I want to accomplish this task because things are just crazy and and people believe that um, killing yourself for the almighty dollar is the way to go when technically you can do the same thing and make the same thing by by slowing your pace and by being more focused and that's why with the new beginnings I'm trying to teach you how to fine-tune things how to get yourself to the point that you are finding your peace and your joy and it all takes baby steps so you know don't walk away from this and go oh my gosh I'm never gonna accomplish this there's just so much I need to accomplish you know decluttering is a process and we all tend to um, just gather things over time you just gather things you're gifted things you end up with things you, you pile things you know as we go through this process of decluttering you gotta go room to room and and as you declutter too I think it's not just a, a space issue I'm just using this as an example but it's not a space issue anymore it's it's something inside of you um, you're decluttering your your head you're decluttering your life and like when it comes down to decluttering here's just a simple simple tip simple process that can make decluttering a lifelong thing and and make it something that um, be, becomes a, a habit when you bring the mail home instead of just piling it because I used to do that I'd, I'd have this pile and then I'd eventually go through it I come home with the mail and sometimes even at the post office now and there's it's that junk flyer mail I'll just pitch it there um, it just says resident doesn't have my address on it or whatever you know so but I go through and I take all that cluttered mail all that junk and I throw it away instantly that's one less heap in my house that's one less pile I have to worry about the stuff that um, you know somebody's sending me a credit card offer it gets shredded and it goes in my fire um, I just I take care of that stuff instantly it's like a process so that I don't have to go back and double work it's just like when you um, take the wash off the wash line instead of taking the wash off the wash line and just throwing it over your arm and taking it in the house and throwing it on a heap you fold it put it in the basket take it in the house put it away and you're done you know when you take those learn to take those steps to be more efficient in everything you do you know I, I want you to constantly be paying attention to how you can make your day-to-day -day chores easier for yourself because that's making you more efficient and giving you more time to focus it elsewhere and the thing is we get so busy and we're doing stuff to the to the degree that we do lose our joy and we do lose our happiness so I truly believe that when we start having a plan for our day and we start focusing on making our tasks more efficient it all comes together and at the end of the day you've got extra time and um, 
You know, I didn't commit myself to things. Like, I've, I've wanted to do Bible study, and I showed you the basket that I'm making. That's a basket class. It's from 12 to 3.30 on Fridays, every Friday. I would never commit to stuff like that because I'm like, how in the world am I going to have time for that? The thing is, you commit to it, and you make time for that. And amazingly enough, I have more time as a result of it. It's when we stop and take time to cater to ourselves and care for ourselves and take time for ourselves and do things that give us joy, do things that benefit us, that help us to grow, you are going to be more joy-filled and you are going to have more energy, you're going to be more efficient because you're happier and you're going to have more time to do things. Doing things you enjoy doing really makes a difference in our lives and people don't realize that. Angela says, make the habit of touching things once instead of, I'll deal with it later. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. There is nothing worse for me now than to go in my office and find a pile because I have gotten to the point where I eliminate those piles. I've also gone digital so I've eliminated the need for filing cabinets and paperwork. There are certain things that you need. Most of those end up in a fire safe but I do not have a I don't have a paper trail. I have an electronic trail and that does not mean that I stop taking care of things and tracking things. Evernote has 4,000 notes in it and there's a reason for that. I keep track of things, but I can do it so much more efficiently. And we talked about that, you know, pen and paper versus the electronic um, devices. You got to find what works for you there too. But that is it. You got to figure out your process and figure out what works for you. Um, I am recording Getting Organized in a Crazy Busy World, which will be a um, video and a training class at treyerwildernessacademy.com. And in that, I'm going to show you my process of how I use these apps and how I keep track of my day. I don't do paper st or sticky notes anymore because they end up being very cumbersome. They're another pile. Um, they get lost. And by doing the things the way I do, and if you do pen and paper, when you find, and I was really organized with that before too until it just got too cumbersome to, to be able to do it. But Keeping track of things, and, and like Angela said, only limiting yourself to touching it once is so very important. And your home will start to take on a whole new shape. So once you've decluttered your home, and then you start keeping up with the process of being more efficient in your tasks and, and not creating those piles, you will feel so good, and, and it will feel so healthy for you. So, like I said, today we're a little bit all over the place. I want to read something to you. This is what inspired today's um, class. And I'm also going to add some stuff at the end of this that's a little different today. Um, I, I just felt led to share both of these things. I also want to mention that I have some really great materials coming up maybe next week. It depends how um, I am led to teach. But um, the Mountain Man and I are watching a devotional and it is phenomenal and I can't wait to share that with you and I have a bunch of books that I'm reading that I'd also like to share some with you. Um, before I read this, I almost forgot to share this again. I am really excited. I want to just give a little shout out to my friend Stacy Lynn Harris. You've heard me mention her before. She is on the cover of the current issue of the New Pioneer magazine. And I'm really excited also because my article is on page, I think, 88, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. And the Mountain Man Jr. got his picture in the magazine also. But this is one of my latest um, articles. It's uh, an off-grid living primer. And I uh, wanted to mention also that we will be giving away Stacy Lynn Harris's book upcoming. I'm not sure if I'm going to do it here on Facebook Live or if I'm going to do a YouTube Live. Either way, whenever I do this, it will be upcoming and very soon. Her cookbooks are amazing. She is amazing. She's my hero. She's a very good friend of mine. And uh, 
she has, I believe, it's seven children that she's homeschooling and doing a TV show and her books and all the things that I do, and it's just crazy. You know, I, I struggle to keep up sometimes myself, and I, I watch her, and she just blows me away. So there are great benefits to being organized, to be able to accomplish all those things. But I just wanted to give a shout out to her today and also mention the New Pioneer Magazine. If you guys have not seen the New Pioneer Magazine, I highly recommend it. It has a lot of self-sufficient um, preparedness, homesteading information in it. I've been writing for them since 2012 and um, they just have amazing, amazing writers and really great uh, magazine to work for. So just wanted to give them a shout out also. So back to our goals and planning and having a purpose. All right, we need to have purpose in our lives. Maybe some of you are at a point in life that you no longer feel the need for goals and planning, but you do need a purpose. And, and that could be embracing your hobbies, that could be um, being a light to others, nurturing others. There's so many things we can do, but finding our joy in our life and finding things that we enjoy doing is important and that might take practice that might mean that you have to experiment and try a bunch of things before you find something that gives you joy and gives you purpose if you don't need to have goals in your life but you know clarity direction and purpose play such an important role in how we live our day to day and we need a reason to get up every day we need a reason um, To look toward our day. I couldn't imagine my days without some sort of organized thought process to them. Like I said, my main goal is getting up and doing my devotions every day. But getting up and, and having a focus. Many of you ladies homeschool, so I'm sure that you've got some kind of a an idea of what you will be focusing on. We feed our families. We have jobs that we work out of our home or that we go to you know so we have some kind of an idea of what we need to do but when you flubber through life and you don't you don't really have it all together that's exactly how you feel you feel like you're flubbering you feel like you have no direction you feel lost and that's not a good place to be and when you can bring it all together that you have this glorious feeling of thank God it's a new day I have a new day what am I gonna do with my day what does today look like and that's why I schedule my day for tomorrow I will schedule that tonight I will know tonight what I need to accomplish what I didn't get done today what is going on for tomorrow and I wake up and I have peace about it because I know what I have to do. There is a peace and joy found when you have it all together. And I'm not saying that I have it all together. Lord only knows. I'm still muddling through just like you are, but I certainly am at a different place than I was a year ago. And I am completely at a different place than I was six years ago. And I've always been an organized person. but. Boy, when you can really fine tune it, there is something to say about it, and there's so much growth in it. So that's what I'm trying to get you to do, is to learn how to continue to fine tune. As you grow through this year, because you're going to grow, you're going to learn how to better schedule things for yourself. You're going to learn how to give yourself grace. You're going to learn how to have new beginnings every day. You're going to learn how to focus on your purpose, find your joy and learn how to work smarter instead of harder. You will have so much growth and as you keep going in that you keep fine-tuning that and you keep finding what works better and better for you. I love finding better ways to organize myself and it is just so very very gratifying to me to be able to do that. Mona says we are lost. Love God but lost. Well, and, and there's many people there there's many, many people there, Mona. And what we, what we need to do is every day focus on finding a purpose. And being able to 
pull ourselves out of that lost place and, and find our joy again. You know, we all end up in that place of being lost. The mountain man and I struggled greatly last year, which is so, so much to do. And, and you know, we were focused and everything, but we felt so lost. And now, you know, the more that we look to God for direction, the less lost we feel and, and the more focused we feel. And, and there's such great power in that. And, and sometimes, too, when we're in those lost places, it takes the kindness and love of somebody else to help us get us out of those places. And we have been blessed to have those people in our lives. Mona, you have been one of those people in our lives. Many of you on here have been those people in our lives that have helped us regain direction sometimes when we have felt lost. So the thing is, that is the importance of community. That's the important of, importance of fellowship. That's the importance of friends. And, and, and being able to confide in people and know that they are there and they are the kind of people in your life that are going to help you get out of that lost place. And, you know, I think that it's safe to say that in our community right now, of the people we have joining us, that we are forming that. And we are forming a place where we can be of help to one another. Focusing on God's grace and giving ourselves and each other grace helps so much. Oh my goodness, yes. Without grace in our lives, we do fumble. And, and you know, I couldn't imagine my life, I say it all the time, I could not imagine my life without God in it. That is one huge, huge thing. And, and I will admit, though, for the mountain man and I last year, some of our struggles, even with God in our lives, you know, we were in a weird place. And you get in those weird places. And sometimes, like I said, it takes, it takes somebody else to help us get us out of those places, guidance, kind words, grace. And, and when you can move past your place of being lost and you slowly start progressing, you want to keep progressing and you want to keep finding your joy. And, and um, I just feel so blessed with the community that we have because the mountain man and I are in such a rich, rich and very deep place right now. And I've said it. I, I've said it before, and I want to make sure this is clear. I don't want you guys to feel if you, when I talk about my relationship with God, if you're not in the same place I am, don't let it deter you. We have come to such a rich place because we have been seeking Him, seeking Him to such a level that even some of our most um, faith-led friends and and guides think we're nuts and it has put us in a place also that we felt very alone in our walk except for with God and the one thing that we got to keep in mind is that's where it comes from and the deeper you walk with God the deeper your views on life um, your ability to find joy, your comfort and peace gets. And um, I, I know I will be talking more about this because we have been going through, this last month has been a really crazy month for us in that we have stepped very, very deeply into our faith and have left many people scratching their heads. And... Um, as a result, their guidance to us uh, left us feeling a little hollow. And um, it, it enabled us, though, to pull deeper with our relationship with God. And as a result, we have been blessed abundantly. So I will be sharing more on that with you guys later. I'm not prepared to share for that, to share that today. But... I want to encourage you to deepen your walk with God. 
and, and really put your faith and trust in Him to help you become unlost and to, to be found. Um, to be able to regain your focus and your purpose. We all have purpose. We all have great, great stories. Um, that can nurture others. We have abilities that can help others and nurture others. We have gifts. We have so much to offer. So when I hear people say they're lost, it does, it does hurt my heart because I want to help them to be removed from that lost place because I know what loss feels like. I've been lost a bunch of times in my life as a result of really rough circumstances lost in that I didn't know what to do with myself, but never did I sway from God, nor did I blame God for any of the hardships I was going through. And I always pulled into Him. And I'm realizing as I get older and as I'm walking through these journeys that I'm in right now, I've always pulled into Him, but what becomes really priceless is pulling into him in an extreme way. I want to read this. This was supposed to be at the end, but it fits right now. This is today's. This is today's devotional. Luke 5, 4. Launch out into the deep. Go deeper. The disciples fished all night and caught nothing. And then Jesus said, launch out into the deep and let down your nets. And when they had done this, they caught a great number of fish. Notice three things here. One, working harder isn't necessarily the answer, as we said. Working harder doesn't do it. It's working smarter, not harder. Okay? The disciples toiled all night. Nobody could have questioned their work ethic, but when you fish in water that's too shallow, no amount of effort will bring results. Two, you need to obey God even when you don't understand his plan. Peter, a seasoned fisherman, had to set aside his pride and say, Nevertheless, at your word I will. In, in 2 Kings chapter 5, Naaman had to humble himself and bathe in the Jordan in order to be healed of leprosy. In Gethsemane, Jesus displayed the same attitude when he prayed, Not my will, but yours be done. 3. Going deeper always works. Jesus said, Two men built houses, but only one house survived the storm because the builder dug deep and laid his foundation on the rock. Author Phil Yancey's former pastor said, He sometimes felt like an old hand-operated pump. Everyone who came along would reach up and pump vigorously a few times, and each time he felt something drain out of him. Finally, he had nothing more to give. At a ministry retreat, he expressed his thoughts to a very wise nun. Expecting her to offer soothing words about what a wonderful sacrificial person he was, instead, she gave him some great advice. There's only one thing to do when your reservoir is dry. Go deeper. And that's the word for you today. Okay. This is exactly what the mountain man and I have been doing. We have been following God's lead to a point that it's, it's scary. And for people watching us, it has been even scarier. Because it's not the normal mindset for people um, in today's day and age to pick up your cross and totally walk away from the norm and do what God calls you to do to such a degree that it looks like you're abandoning your own family and you're abandoning your own needs and you're abandoning your requirements when we are called to serve and that is what we have been doing and out of that place has come so much amazing amazing stuff and God has greatly greatly blessed us as a result of it like I said, though, we have other people that are watching us, that are close to us, and I know they're scared for us because they think we're crazy, but we're doing what we're called to do, and I know 
that God is going to bless us greatly for it and is blessing us greatly for it. So it's really important more than anything in this world that we follow God's lead, not our own and not of the world and not, you know, other people's advice sometimes as much as they mean well if God is calling us to do something and we deny it and I'm gonna tell you this right now the mountain man and I have done that a couple times uh, where we weren't as strong in our faith and we decided to follow the suggestion of others um, we really burned ourselves and as we walk deeper and deeper with God we are learning that sometimes he is going to ask us to do things that is going to totally rock our world to totally um, <laughs> make others shake their head and and they're gonna be scary the things that he may ask you to do but when you do them and you see the growth and you see the benefits and you see the reward and you see his love and his grace and his mercy and all that just piled on it is the most amazing place to be and I know that I, I believe that with what has been going on with us over the last year with our home and and what we've been sharing so openly I I have to believe you guys can see it and as we progress from this place that we are at today and move forward because we have some really wild and crazy things going on right now today as those things unravel and unfold I know that you are going to see the works of God in our lives and it's so powerful and the thing is guys you have that same ability in planning your lives in planning your days and and it might mean that you're lost I know some of you are going through some really rough stuff and I know that today you might feel lost but tomorrow's another day and so is the next day and um, as you progress and as you create purpose for yourself every day direction you need direction everybody needs direction otherwise we're lost it's no different than going from place to place in a car if you don't know where you're going you're gonna get lost right okay so you need direction and if that means getting up out of bed today making your bed getting dressed and feeling good about yourself sitting down and reading a book um, doing something new there's Sudoku puzzles and drawing and painting and baskets and sewing and knitting there's so many things that we can do if that's what it takes to get you out of your lost place it's called a start it's a step and that's what we all need to do every day is just keep taking those steps to better our days to get out of that place of being lost to hold on tight to friends that you know will help you grab your bootstraps and pull you out of that space because we all get lost in life and um, I, I really truly believe and feel that it's such a blessing to have those wholesome friends that you can call on even if that's just to give you prayer to give you direction um, just to tell you they love you um, oh funny Angela says taking one little step at a time instead of expecting ourselves to be perfect and have it all together I didn't see that till just now but I saw it was there how fitting and how perfect and yes that's exactly it none of us have it together I mean if you raise your hand and think you have it together I won't believe you because we don't we just don't maybe one day we do but the next day we don't it's that fast that our our resolve changes and our days change and our circumstances change and and um, people in our homes or in our lives cause us to change you know because they're going through something there's so many things that affect how our days go 
Chad says, I want to ask, just to make sure that we are all on the same page, what are we saying when we are saying we're lost? Well, I think lost has a lot of different uh, meanings in today's teaching. Um, lost could be that people are far from God and that they need to be re they need to rekindle that relationship or maybe start that relationship. But lost is also in that um, some people have certain circumstances going on in their life that has just totally ripped the rug out from under them and they are feeling lost. They are feeling the need to regroup their life. And then I also know that lost for some of the others is that um, they may have lost their purpose in life. That they are in a place and um, they don't know what to do with their time or themselves. Um, lost, I think, today is taking on a whole lot of different perspectives. However, the first thing I said is being lost and away from God or not having that relationship will affect everything else that I just talked about. So there are lots of aspects to being lost, but one of the biggest things I feel is that when you do have a relationship with Christ and you do have a relationship with God and with Papa, I have started calling him Papa, I just it's so personal and it feels so good and it feels so right and I can just picture myself sitting at his feet or being wrapped in his arms. That relationship there helps us to have direction and helps us not to feel lost. But I think in society today, with everything that is flying at us, with everything that is going on around us, a lot of people just feel plain lost. Like you can't find your bearings, you can't find your direction. Like your GPS is off and we need to figure out what it takes to get it back there. Regardless if you do or don't have a relationship with, with God, I think that is the consensus, is that a lot of people are just feeling lost. And part of, the, the main purpose of my videos has become the intention of helping people find Christ because we as a family know how valuable that is and how that can help you through anything in your life. The next thing is to help inspire and nurture people that are starting to walk that walk or are rekindling that walk or have that walk. To figure out the emotions and the, and the feelings and, and um, the things that we experience in life and even uh, walking in the valleys, walking in the good though. And that's the thing I want you guys to learn to share is your celebrations. Your celebrations are really important, and as we were saying earlier, the community that we have and showing each other grace and, and being able to have a place to go to feel comfortable and to be able to regain yourself from that lost place is important. Unfortunately today, the, the physical church, and, and God created the church not to be a physical building but to be a group of believers that love on one another and show each other grace and teach the word. But the struggle, ooh, I am seeing that my battery is going low. Give me one second here. Ah, I don't want to lose you. The church can be a place where people struggle because it's not always, like there's hurt that comes from church because not everybody's showing each other grace and there's there's things happening where church is a peep place of all sinners and we're all looking for redemption and we're all you know there is not a perfect person out there so that's why I feel it's so important every week to really nurture everybody because There's just, we go through stuff. Everybody's going through stuff. And, and um, it's, it goes beyond the new beginnings, uh, you know, of a new year. There's just stuff every day that goes on around us, in the workplace, in our homes, um, in, the, in the church. 
wherever and it, it does cause people to to feel lost in the sense of self and and I really believe that the more we have a plan and the more that we set ourselves goals to attain and and have direction and purpose in our lives um, the less you feel lost we have such direction right now and focus and, and those those days of feeling lost are a foreign thing for me and I want to see that for the rest of you that you know you may momentarily lose your joy because stuff happens but you know how to find it again and you know how to refocus to find it and I hope this makes sense um, I've just had so many different thoughts going through my mind. So, Chad, I hope that helps. Um, yes, Kelly, and good morning. Um, it's so important to have good godly friends that we can call on and that will understand. And, um, and she says also feeling distance between themselves and God. You know, Sometimes we, we pray to God and we pray to God and we ask God for things and um, we don't feel his presence and, and that causes us to feel lost. Sometimes though what God is doing, and this was true in our case also, is that he's there. You may not feel him. He's always there. But he's waiting for you to act. And, and that was what he was waiting on us to do in some of our circumstances. He was waiting for us to act. And we are very active. But he was waiting for us to move forward so that he could do the work in us and around us. And sometimes when we're lost and we don't hear his voice and we're waiting on his voice, I believe that He's waiting on us to act, to, to make a move, to um, come out of that lost place no matter how hard it is, and, and be proud of who we are. And once we start acting and moving forward, that's when he is able to bless us and he is able to to show himself he needs us to be active sometimes we can't you know he it's a two-way street he does greatly bless us but at times he's requiring us to be active and that is why it's important to have a purpose and to have direction and to have goals in all of our direction and goals and planning we don't do anything without God's direction. We actually pray for it. Before we even found a realtor to sell our home, we've prayed on it. And we thought we found that person and things didn't feel right. And we prayed some more and we've been praying for direction. And divinely, um, we were gifted with the right people, the right person. And I really think that that is a result of us seeking him and seeking his direction. Um, when we just blindly plan and, 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 well, when we blindly plan, you know, we're not necessarily incorporating him into um, our day to day. And that's important because if that's, if that's where your focus is and that you depend on God for things, it's important to include him in everything that you're doing and asking him for the direction and expecting him to lead versus us just being bold and doing that. So it takes our action and it takes our eyes on him so that while we are acting, we are following his lead. Does that make sense? I hope so. Um, I see there's a bunch of messages. Let's see here. Angela says, when I think of feeling lost, it's a despondency that makes a person give up on themselves. Yes. 
And Mona says, yes, Angela, you are right. We need to get back into the real world and find direction and new goals. Awesome, Mona. Awesome. I'm so glad to hear that. And, and yes, you know, um, displacency, uh, complacency. When we're complacent, that place is almost like um, being surrounded by negative people. The more you stay in that place, the more that place holds you. So it's so important for us to have action. Um, you know, there was a time in my life when the rug was ripped out of uh, out from under me. Um, the Mountain Man Jr.'s biological father had cheated on me for two years and just walked out on us. And uh, I really struggled with that. And I would uh, get my kids on the bus and I would sit in the corner and just, you know, basically be a, a mess. And I realized that the only way to stay out of that place was to get up every day, put on my boots. Well, first I would shower. And I would feel good about myself. And then I would put on those boots and I would pull up those bootstraps. And even if I didn't know what direction I was going in and I didn't have a plan, it's like saying to you to make your bed. You make your bed, that's progress. You get up, you get a shower, you feel good about yourself. You put on an outfit that gives you empowerment and, and that's step two. And then you just keep going and, and each day you'll find more things you can do to make you feel better. And you know, uh, being in that place that I was in, you know, it gave me empathy for people that end up there. It gave me empathy for people that hit depression. And you know, as we walk through these things in our lives, it enables us to help other people in the same place. And that's why I do what I do, because I've walked a lot of different things in my life. I'm not perfect. I'm, I, I, am, I don't know all. But what I do know is that there is so much greater things in this world if we seek them. And, and it takes work. It really does take work to get ourselves out of those places of being lost. Uh, of feeling unable to find our joy, um, of being uh, shackled by emotions, by occurrences, by people, by things. You know, all these things affect us, but the more we seek to pull ourselves out of those places, the more joy and beauty in life we will find. And again like I said it does take the help of other people sometimes to get us in those out of those places Angela says sometimes I have to go back to God's last direction he's waiting for me to implement that last thing I sensed him saying to me yes that's exactly it that's exactly it and that's exactly where we were too it's like we were looking for answers and looking for answers and looking for his guidance and looking and listening and not hearing any of it and realizing that that gut feeling that we had was him wanting us to move, to do something, to do something for ourselves. And, and that was really, really, that's a really, really huge thing. That's really being in tune with, with God and the Holy Spirit and realizing that he did give you a, a a sense, a direction, a feeling, and you didn't act on it. And when we act, and when we take that step, that first step to progress, to direction, to purpose, so much can happen. You know, it's like a springboard. You take that first step, and God is going to catapult you into the rest, and into the next, and can keep directing you, and keep guiding you. Brittany, I see Tammy saying hi to Brittany. I did not see Brittany pop on here. So Brittany, I am going to say hi to you also. It's weird. Sometimes things show on the screen. Sometimes they don't. So welcome, Brittany. And welcome anybody else that I did not welcome. 
Kelly says we are broken and each step forward is a success for God because to stay where we are only benefits evil. Oh gosh, that's so true. That's so true. And and it allows the enemy to sit there and celebrate. When we're lost, he thinks it's great because we are not able, we are in that com in that uh, lull and in that valley and in that stagnant place where where he just lingers and it's that first step guys it's that first step we are all broken we are all going through different things we are all dealing with and I don't want it to sound doom and gloom because you know what, through this valley I have shared so many awesome things that have happened and I'm seeking those awesome things and I'm seeking those bright lights and I'm seeking the, the shiny pennies and the hearts and the eagles. This morning on the way out the driveway, the, I always see hearts and I also used to see the eagles but the mountain man sees eagles extremely like I see my hearts and we were driving out the driveway this morning to go meet up with uh, Austin and uh, an eagle flew across the driveway. And the other day when I was filming and I was showing you our winter wonderland, that eagle flew in front of me. Last night, I was getting ready to heat up dinner that I had made during the day, and there was a heart-shaped piece of fat on the top of the, of the broth and in the pot. And you know, it's, sometimes it's just those little glimpses that we need to just put that smile back on our face and that spring in our step and and just give us those are the things those are my stepping stones those are the things that give me that warm fuzzy feeling and that that um that, that just knowing that God is present knowing that he is showing me that knowing that it is just going to put a smile on my face and keep me going and I know that there are a lot of hurting people out there. So many of you reach out to me and share your personal stories, and I am so grateful. I am so grateful that you are willing, that you, you it humbles me, that you feel um, comfortable enough to share those things with me, and it means so much to me. It also means so much to me to have you folks to be able to bounce off of, too. Many of you message me personally, and we communicate. and. You know, it's it's a wonderful thing to have those connections. And when I'm when I'm talking on here, like I said, I don't prepare these things. I just feel like God gifts me with the materials and then guides me to be able to share with you. You know, last week when we were talking, there were like 63 of you that commented. There were, it was it was very powerful and that's the community that we're building here and I see you guys talking amongst each other and I want to give you guys you know a purpose every Wednesday to come out and join me and I want you all to know in the notes below there is a prayer list and um, you are all prayed for all of you that reach out to me and share your personal stories you are prayed for. You're not only prayed for by me, but you're prayed for by many of the people on here through, through my church and so many others. And, and I just want you to know that you're not alone. Um, there are people in, in, in our large community that reach out to me through YouTube and our Facebook page and this Facebook Live that are going through marital issues and and divorces and um, dealing with abandonment and uh, abuse of many kinds and and being lost and um, needing direction and and you know what we're all in this journey together and and we are all walking good happy exciting things and at the same time walking really rough stuff and the beautiful thing of that is that none of us are alone that you are all prayed for and loved and that 
God is always there, always beside you, always present. And he will never abandon you. If he's silent, he might be looking for you to act. And additionally, he, he loves you. And he's not going to inflict any harm on you. There is evil in this world, and, and I think it was Angela that said it, but, you know, no, it was Kelly that said it, that, you know, the enemy likes when we're in those low places, and the only way to remove the enemy is to call on God and seek God. So when you are in that low place, you've really got to have a deep trust that God is going to help you, that he has purpose for you, and that by taking that first step and just slowly doing things for yourself, slowly coming up with a direction, um, your, your life will change. And through the help of our community and others um, and good friends in your local area that I hope you all have. Um, and the thing is, if you don't, I have so many wonderful, wonderful friends that I communicate with often daily that don't live anywhere near me. So I told you before, you can always reach out to me. You can always email me at survive at treyerwilderness.com. You can personal message me or you can leave comments below requesting prayers. But um, seek God. Seek direction and seek your friends and and um, if they don't understand your place you're in like I said you can seek me Kelly says those things are blessings to encourage us to keep moving forward seeing a beautiful sunrise seeing the first robin being greeted by our animals and all their love this and many others yes you know and that's that's how I view that and you know there'll be days when Everything is just falling apart around me and I will go for a walk and there will be a heart shape in the snow, untouched, nothing else around it. You know, the mystery is how did it get there, but there it was just for me. You know, and those, those things so many people miss because they're in a low place. And the thing is, when we focus on our place that we are in, our lostness, our, our directionless situations, we miss the beauties God is giving us and that are present and that are right in front of our nose. And it's a truth. And it's not that that's, you know, that there's something wrong with you. It's that when you are in that low place, it's very easy to just focus on that low place. But the thing is, we need to redirect our focus. Our focus needs to be on God and on seeking the good and the positive in our lives. I believe it was last week that we talked about um, being able to stay positive and I just put out a podcast on Friday about how to stay positive positive. and you know when we're in these places and we don't know what to do and we don't know what to seek one thing I'd like you to consider is the things that are from your past that you haven't done in a while the things that you got great joy from those are always a great place to start is to start doing the things that you found joy in, the things that you love, the things that gave you purpose, the things that gave you meaning. You know, tap into that a little bit. That'll help get you started. And when you start doing some of that stuff, it might guide you to other places, to other things, to other activities, to other people that will start to pull you out of that shell and out of that place to enable you to find joys and focus. But guys, the most important thing is is to get up every day, make your bed, put on your best smile, and 
I talked about it earlier in our sessions about the things we say to ourselves and the things we feel about ourselves. Um, you know, if, if you're saying negative things to yourself, you're keeping yourself in that lost place. And you've got to write down all of those things that you're saying to yourself and those things that you feel about yourself in this place that you're in right now because guaranteed they're negative. And on that same piece of paper on the other side, I want you to turn those statements into something positive. And then I want you to fold that piece of paper in half so that all you see is the positive. And I want that to be one of the first things you do in the morning is to read those things to yourself. I am pretty. I am, I am healthy. I am loved. I am not worthless. I have purpose. I am lovable. Whatever those things are, you need to keep saying them things to yourself because you need to be the first, impo first positive encouragement to yourself because once you believe it, it'll be easy for everybody else to see it. We are our worst uh, critics. We are our worst critics. We say the worst things to ourselves. We keep ourselves in the worst places because we don't believe in ourselves. And guys, I was there. I grew up being physically and verbally abused as a child and um, because of that, that's what I uh, drew to myself for the longest time until I finally believed that I had worth. And it is important that we believe in our abilities and what we can do for ourselves and what we are. Affirmations, sister. You got it. Affirmations. Love. Grace. It's also part of it. You got to love yourself and you got to love who you are. Give yourself grace and believe that you have a purpose and believe that you have direction and believe that you can do anything you set your mind to because a lot of the times the reasons we don't meet our goals is because we don't believe in ourselves enough and we, we, we stop ourselves. We literally put up walls that stop ourselves from reaching our goals which we are going to talk about next week because that is part of the book I'm reading right now and I saw I think Kelly said something. Oh, Angela said, when I feel least like singing praises to God is when I need it the most. You know it. You know it. If I start by going through the motions, the change happens in, in my heart. Yeah. And that is so, so true. That is so, so true. You know, in the movie, this is, this is related. Um, in the movie The Shack, there is a scene where Papa and the Holy Spirit are dancing in the kitchen. I love, that is one of the things I've told you guys before, that you know you can change your mind by music and by affirmations and by giving yourselves love. Music is a mood changer in a great, great way. And um, I, that is one of the things I do, and it is so true, Angela, that when we don't feel we need it is when we need it the most. And But in that scene, it just makes me smile. I can watch that movie over and over again um, just to see the different perspective of how God is portrayed there. God is portrayed as a fun-loving God, and that is our God. We put this perspective and this persona on God that he's this big, stern papa, but he's this fun-loving, happy God. And when I see... I, I envision that, you know, I love, you know, the mountain boy and I, when we were on the farm, we haven't done it as much here because we're so busy all the time and we're not, but we still do it. But on the farm, it was really, it just really stands out to me. I was, I, I ended up there from an abusive marriage and I needed to find myself and I would turn the music on and I would dance in my kitchen with my boy. And it was so fun and it was such a great way to just, pull myself out of the deep place that I had ended up in. 
and music can do that and I encourage you guys to do that do do dance like nobody's watching sing like nobody's listening live like there's no tomorrow you know somebody sent me that through that valley in my life and you know what those things stick with me in such a big way and and that's the thing you know if you can't think of anything else to do get up in the morning get dressed turn the music on and dance Angel that was perfect Kelly says I agree it brings peace to my soul and a positive and a and, and positive yeah clearly it, it and and music has that ability so does laughter so do relationships and being with people and you know what sometimes when we are in those low places we pull ourselves away from people I know that I have done that different times in my life I was embarrassed when um, my husband prior had had walked out on me you know we tend to reflect that on ourselves as if there was something wrong with ourselves when we neglect to realize that it's just the other person and we pull ourselves away we keep ourselves hidden from other people instead of enabling ourselves to have that fellowship and have that laughter and have that touch and have those all those things we need to pull us out of that lost place so we've got to realize what we're doing and and pay attention to where we are and where we want to be and what's keeping us from that and oftentimes it's ourselves and and that's a hard thing to realize sometimes and it is a truth though that we have the tendency to keep ourselves from some of the best things that are available in our lives but it's it's a matter of finding strength to get ourselves out of that place and God is the first taking action is a second and I think that having good people surrounding us is the third and and through that action that you take and progressively taking that action you will find such great things and I look forward to being able to nurture each of you out of that lost place that you're in because I've been there and I know what it's like and it's not a fun place to be but sometimes we need to be in that place in order for us to progress to the greater things in life and you know I look back on my life and all the things I've walked through every single one of them no matter how horrible and awful they were I don't I wouldn't wish them to be different because it builds our character it builds who we are it builds our strengths it builds our our resolve and it helps us to become who we need to be so I do want to read this to you. This was the first uh, part of setting our goals and maybe this will be helpful um, as well and then I will probably uh, end things for today because we've been on for a long time. Philippians 3, 13 through 14. I got my eye on the goal. I'm off and running. What are your goals? One day Supreme Court Justice Oliver Wendell Holmes lost his train ticket. As he searched for it, obviously irritated, the conductor said, It's okay, Your Honor. Just mail it in. We all know you and trust you. Holmes replied, I'm not concerned about finding my ticket. I just want to know where I'm going. How many of us are there? We're not sure where we're going. We're not sure what direction we need to go in. Having goals lets us know where you're going in life. 50% of the people around you have no idea where you're going or where they're going. Another 40% will go in any direction they're led. The remaining 10% know where they'd like to go, but fewer than half of them are prepared to pay the price to get there. What enabled Jesus to endure the shame of the cross was his vision of the resurrection and a church that would one day change the world. Moses relinquished the comforts of Pharaoh's palace because he envisioned the promised land. Store owner J.C. Penney said, Give me a stock clerk with a goal, and I'll give you someone who will make history. On the other hand, give me someone without a goal, and I'll give you a stock clerk. Think about that, guys. Really heavily think about that. The truth is, while you are working on your goals, your goals are working on you. And the reward you get for reaching them isn't nearly as important 
as important as what you become in the pursuit of them. So, do you have goals? Are they clear enough to write down? Short enough to fit into a paragraph? Strong enough to help you persevere? And valuable enough to make you pay the price? If so, you'll live to see them fulfilled. So, for those of you that feel lost today, I want you to just make a simple goal. A simple goal of getting up, making your bed, putting your best smile on, and feeling good about yourself. Remind yourself how much you love yourself. And, you know, some people will be like, that's so narcissistic. No, it's not. Narcissistic is when you love yourself and you only focus on yourself and don't love anybody else. What I'm asking you to do is to love yourself and through loving yourself you will be able to love others in a great great way and you will start to show the world a different you. We need to be the ones to be the best we can to ourselves because we are our biggest enemies and because we feel poorly of ourselves we cause we, we attract that from other people so by loving ourselves and by being good to ourselves saying good things to ourselves giving ourselves grace and having a new beginning every day because you're you're going to be unhappy with something you do throughout your day, most likely. You know, there's stuff happens. But keep doing it every day. And keep reminding yourself every day. Because you are important. And you are valuable. And you mean a lot to the rest of the world. And that's, that's the thing that we need to do. And we need to start. And we need to have a purpose every day. And if that is getting up and just looking at the beauty outside and seeing where the day leads do it do it and on your journey if you need an ear please don't hesitate to reach out Kelly says I agree it brings peace to my so oh that was the previous one I did read that one already so guys I know today was a mixed bag of nuts but it all kind of flows together it all kinds of goes together in, in that when we get lost we get complacent and when we get lost we struggle where if we can form just a sense of direction just a slight plan of some kind things will start turning around and trust me you're not alone I'm human and, and so is the mountain man and, and the mountain man junior. We go through these things too. We struggle with these things. But I will say this, the deeper you pull into God and the more you seek him and the more you fully trust him and then incorporate that into the aspect of loving yourself and and realizing that you can accomplish things realizing that you are important and realizing that you have purpose we all have purpose he designed us each to have a purpose and you know we might have we might have gone through life and and he used us and and we did our purpose so maybe he has a new purpose for you because if you if you're still here he has purpose he has purpose in your days and I want you to be encouraged by that and I want you to really find joy and peace in that that he has a purpose for you now you just need to fine-tune and pull into him and seek his direction and be active take those baby steps one day at a time one step at a time but know you're loved I love you all you guys are awesome I am just so grateful to have each of you in my life to have each of you join me every week and to um, be able to nurture one another because that's the power of community that's the power of fellowship so I'm going to say a prayer here and uh, let you guys get back to your day Papa I just thank you today for the powerful things that you've brought across the screen here for your words for your love 
for the comments, for everyone being willing to nurture one another, for the honesty of, of people's needs. And Lord, I just ask that you wrap your loving arms around everybody present. Those that are watching the replay, we all struggle with different things. We all struggle with our self-worth, with our um, internal feelings of ourself, with the hard things that we've carried on our shoulders as a result of maybe other people in our lives and the struggles that we walk through, the hurts that we carry. And Lord, I just ask that you wrap your loving arms around everyone today and just remove those weights and give them a peace and a comfort. Give them a spring in their step and an extra smile on their face and give them reason and purpose to, to live out their days to find meaning and to remove that lost sense of direction and that just that sense of being lost from their lives. And Lord, I just ask that you love on each of them. Be with those that are in need of healing. Be with those that are in need of love. Be with with those that are struggling in with marital issues and financial issues and forgiveness and hurts and whatever their their needs are Lord I just ask that you just hold them tight and help them and give them a glimpse of your love and your grace and your mercy and remind them that they're loved and that regardless what they've done in their life and, or what has been done to them, that they are loved, that they, they are your child, and that every day brings new things. And just to show them a glimpse of you, give them signs, give them the abilities to get up every morning, to turn that music on and to dance with you, and just to find their happiness, Lord. We all deserve that happiness, and that happiness comes from you. Although a lot of times our struggle is that we're seeking that happiness in other places. So just be with them, Lord. Strengthen them. Guide them. And just thank you for the words that you give me every week and the love you give us all. And I, I thank you for what you're going to do in each of their lives this week and, and how you're going to help them and guide them and show them the way and I thank you for what you're gonna do and how it's gonna shine and how it's gonna glow and how you are gonna shine through them and I ask this in your holy and precious name of Jesus amen okay guys Kelly says, praying daily for you all. We've listed the prayer request in our evening prayer journal. God loves you and we are to be a blessing and strength to one another. Amen. Yes. Thank you. Thank you all for joining me today. Thank you for your input. Thank you for your rawness and sharing. Oh, I love you too, Mama Mona. You are a blessing to so many and I look forward to helping you out of your lost place. You won't be there long because I'm going to see you tomorrow. So guys, remember to love on yourself, love on those around you and have a plan. You know, even if it's minute, having a plan gives us a purpose and having a plan and a purpose then gives us direction. And the more we focus on that, the more direction and the more things become clear. So hold on tight. Keep your hands in the car because the ride is always going to be wild and wooly. And just know that you are loved. Know that you are prayed for. And we are going to pick up on this next Wednesday and uh, keep making this happen. So guys, thank you so much. This was awesome. I love you all. And I wish you an awesome rest of your week. All right? God bless you all.